Lusitania has been resting on the seabed for almost 108 years, and within that time, it has gained much attention, especially in the maritime community, but one thing has always remained shrouded in mystery, and this is a secondary explosion. The cause behind the secondary explosion that soon followed the initial torpedo detonation is something that is still heavily debated to this day, and over the years, many theories have been created in an attempt to explain the source of it. The purpose of today's video will be to determine a logical explanation for the most likely cause of the secondary explosion, and this will be done mostly through process of elimination by ruling out many of the other theories that simply hold no foundation as to the true cause of the explosion itself. We will additionally use all currently available information that has been obtained from first-hand accounts and also examination of the wreck. It will also be a good way to debunk some long-lasting theories that continue to spring up every now and again, even though they are simply false based on updated and existing evidence. Before all else, let us get some basic information out of the way and review what is already known about the secondary explosion. The secondary explosion is an event that passengers and crew had either heard or heard and witnessed. Even Walter Schweiger, commander of U-20, noted in his log that a second explosion also occurred, which he put down to perhaps boilers, coal, or powder. Since we know for certain that only one torpedo was fired, based on U-20's log, as well as intercepted telegrams from U-20, this means that the secondary explosion could have only occurred from something originating from within the ship, and it was fairly quickly after the first one, with passenger William McMillan Adams timing it at 30 seconds after the first explosion on his watch. That is all that I have to say about basic information regarding the secondary explosion, and so now it is time to start the analysis. Before we begin to go over each individual theory, we must first examine the rough area of where exactly the torpedo struck Lusitania. All of the information that we have regarding the location of where Lusitania was struck by a torpedo comes entirely from eyewitness accounts, and we will first start with Walter Schweiger, since he had the best view of Lusitania at the time. In U-20's log, Walter Schweiger points out that the torpedo struck Lusitania just behind the bridge, placing the impact of the torpedo towards boiler room number one. By examining survivor eyewitness accounts from the crew boiler room number one, we can narrow the exact location down even further to the mid to after end of boiler room number one or the aft coal bunker in this boiler room. This is supported by lifeboat number five, which was knocked over by the wake of the torpedo when it struck Lusitania on the starboard side. Now, lifeboat number five is actually located above the forward coal bunker of boiler room number two. However, since Lusitania was still moving forward at about 18 knots at the time of the torpedo detonation, the placement of the torpedo impact will therefore be a bit more forward than the placement of lifeboat number five. And of course, there are the aforementioned eyewitness accounts that state that it had witnessed the secondary explosion coming out of Lusitania's first funnel, which is connected to boiler room number one. These accounts confirm both explosions, the torpedo detonation and the secondary explosion, occurred in boiler room number one. Now that we have the necessary information and background, we can now take a closer look at the theories themselves and start to rule out the most unlikely ones. The first theory we'll be taking a look at states that the secondary explosion was caused by diminution stored in Lusitania's cargo hold exploding. This has become one of the more well-known theories out there, and before we go any further with it, it is important to pinpoint where exactly the munitions themselves were being stored. The munitions were being stored in Lusitania's number two cargo hold. This compartment was wired tight and is located two compartments forward of boiler number one which means that the torpedo impact was actually nowhere close to where the munitions were being stored, as we've already established, that the torpedo impacted boiler room number one, and of course the munitions theory also fails to take into account the 30 second delay between the two explosions. Now, if the munitions had in fact gone off, the explosion wouldn't have traveled out of the first funnel, like survivors recalled, but rather cargo hatch number two, which connects to cargo hold number two. This is the most likely path the explosion would have traveled if the munitions really did go off, as explosions generally either travel upward or in a path of least resistance, which means that in a scenario like this, the hatch cover for cargo hold number two would have been blown off of the ship. However, this hatch cover still lies very close to the main structure of the wreck. The explosion from a munitions explosion wouldn't have traveled out of a funnel since, as already mentioned, 
Boiler room number one is two compartments aft and sealed behind a couple watertight bulkheads. Now, if you're still unconvinced that the munitions did not go off, it should be worth mentioning that the munitions themselves were discovered on the wreck to be intact, with some still even in the original packaging, meaning that obviously that couldn't have been the cause of the second explosion, since the munitions are still right there to this day on the wreck itself. Moving on to the next theory, this theory states that the second explosion was caused by coal dust in one of the Lusitania's coal bunkers igniting. Just like the munitions theory, this too has become another commonly accepted explanation for the cause of the secondary explosion, and states that since Lusitania was near the end of her voyage, the coal bunkers would have been nearly empty except for mostly coal dust, and that when a torpedo struck the ship, it shook the coal bunker, causing the coal dust to rise up into the air and, together with a mixture of oxygen, caused it to become highly combustible and ignite. One of the first big issues with this theory is the location of where this explosion supposedly took place, as it was proposed that the torpedo point of impact would have been the forward coal bunker located just in front of boiler room number one. As we've already established, the torpedo impacted the starboard aft coal bunker in boiler room number one, meaning that the torpedo did not impact the forward coal bunker. The next major issue with this theory is that much like the munitions theory, it also fails to take into account the delay between the two explosions, which as previously stated, was about 30 seconds. By that time, the explosion caused by the TNT of the torpedo would have instead been long replaced by thousands of tons of water pouring into Lusitania's coal bunkers and boiler rooms. If there really was an ignition of coal following the initial torpedo explosion, it would have gone off instantly, coinciding with the torpedo detonation, and such an event occurring is not recorded by anyone, not even survivor accounts from the crew boiler number one, who reported no such fiery explosion that they surely would have felt from a coal dust explosion. Much like the munitions, a coal dust explosion would not have traveled out of the first funnel, but instead through coal chutes on either side of the ship, which of course never actually happened. Another theory that's also popped up, but is much less popular than the aforementioned munitions and coal dust, is that the secondary explosion was caused by an aluminum powder explosion, and that when the torpedo struck cargo hold number two, it could have kicked the stored aluminum powder into the air, and as the powder settled, it would have reached explosive concentrations. Once again, the torpedo did not impact any of the magazine holds, and so the theory already starts to fall apart. Additionally, tests conducted regarding aluminum powder explosions have shown that they are very bright, and this does not match any of the survivor witness accounts at all when they witnessed the explosion coming out of the first funnel. Now that we've rolled out munitions, coal dust, and aluminum powder, this leaves us with only two possible logical explanations. The secondary explosion was either caused by a boiler explosion or a steam pipe rupture. Now up until a couple of years ago, it would have been impossible to prove which one of these scenarios was the possible cause of the secondary explosion. That was until 2021, when during an expedition carried out to the wreck, a team of divers managed to gain access to boiler number one for the very first time. What they discovered is that all seven boilers, even though some of them had been dislodged from their bases, were found to be intact. Now, since the boilers are intact, that obviously couldn't have been the cause of the secondary explosion, which leaves us with only one plausible scenario, and that is the secondary explosion was caused by a main steam pipe rupture. The cold seawater making contact with the superheated and superpressurized steam pipe would trigger an explosive reaction known as thermal shock, which would cause the seams to swell rapidly and erupt out of the boiler system in which the steam was being carried in. As a direct result, this would suddenly cause a huge drop in steam pressure, and this actually did occur right after the secondary explosion. This is something that was observed by Captain William Turner and reported by an engineer in Lusitania's starboard turbine engine room, as it was reported that the steam pressure had dropped to just 50 PSI, which is roughly a quarter of what it otherwise should have been. It goes without saying that such a huge loss in steam pressure would pose a massive issue to all devices that are dependent upon steam power, including the main propulsion steam turbine engines and steam steering gear. And sure enough, these systems would all fail not long after the secondary explosion. This is the only way in which the torpedo plays a role in the secondary explosion, as the torpedo is what causes water to enter Lusitania's boiler room in the first place and come into contact with the superheated steam. 
Of course, the rupture of a steam pipe would do no actual damage to the ship's hull, nor cause Lusitania to sink as fast as it did. Simply put, Lusitania's fate was sealed once the torpedo detonated, as the torpedo is the only cause behind Lusitania sinking, and the reason why Lusitania had sunk in those 18 minutes. This is not to say that the secondary explosion was, without a doubt, the result of a steam pipe rupture, but with no other convincing evidence being available, it is the only interpretation that seems reasonable based on the most current information that is accessible and matches the order of events that transpired on the afternoon of the 7th of May.